You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Daniel from California. I just saw your video about how uh, you're being harassed and abused by the teacher in your town in West Virginia. And I want to tell you, I'm going to share that video on my Facebook page. I'm going to tell all the atheist groups I follow about uh, how you're being persecuted. I see you as a true martyr. Uh, I am also an atheist. Uh, And I think that you should not move to New York. I think you should stay where you are and show these Christians that they don't own the world and they don't own that town, and you should not leave because of them. You should not be afraid. Stand up to these bullies. I'm behind you. I appreciate that. I know that a lot of people are behind me. The swell of support that I've received is absolutely unmatched. Absolutely never expected to see the level of support that I have seen in my life. It's just absolutely insane. Seriously, it's completely insane how much people have helped me through this whole situation. Could not ask for more. I could not ask for more. Another note, I'm not a huge fan of the word martyr. I feel like it's kind of a religious word, but I get the sentiment. And about not moving, um, I should stand up to these bullies. I, I get the sentiment there too. I definitely get where you're coming from, but there are literally people trying to murder me. I can't stay or I will be killed. Kylie can't stay because not only will she be ostracized at school and hated by everybody, but people have talked about kidnapping her. Seriously, I cannot stay. I agree with your sentiment, 100%. I'm with you on that, but it's not a safe place to be. So I have to leave, unfortunately. Anyway, I appreciate the voicemail, and I appreciate the support. That being said, I still believe I did the right thing. Kylie still believes she did the right thing. And we would have done it again. We would do it again in a heartbeat. I don't want anybody to think that I regret my decision. I just want people to understand just how dangerous the Christian version of ISIS really is. Part of me worries that even coming out with everything that's happened to me would discourage other people from reporting it when this kind of shit happens to them. And I debated whether or not to even just maybe just keep my mouth shut completely and suffer through this. I think there's value in that position. I think that that could be a, uh, an honest position to hold. But I think raising awareness about how dangerous this is, about how extreme this country is, about how right wing and delusional this country is, I think that's important. So I figure what I'm going to do after all this is said and done is I'm going to make a video about the best way to report a teacher. Having gone through this whole situation myself, I intend to talk about how to do it without getting caught or outed to the best of your ability. Uh, Because this really is a truly dangerous situation. Uh, what's up, Owen? It's Miles from Arizona. Um, I actually have another question about uh, dominionism. Would you call dominionism a cult? You've talked about it before and, frankly, have talked about how incredibly dangerous it is, which, it, believe me, it is. So would you say it's a cult? And if so, would you consider it the most dangerous cult in the world full stop, regardless of whether it's a mainstream cult or a, I, I guess, an apocalypse, a, a suicide, a, an apocalypse doomsday cult like Jehovah's Witness, because you, cause yeah, they are dangerous. I would consider them personally a, a cult, and, and I think that they are the most dangerous thing in the world today, but, or at least in America today. But what are your thoughts? Thank you. Really interesting question. Let let me give you my take on this. Okay, so there's something called the... uh, Oh my God, what's the word for it? I'm suddenly forgetting it. Uh, Overton window, yeah. 
there's something called the Overton window, okay? And the Overton window is basically the window of acceptable public discourse, right? At one point in American history, it was unacceptable to discuss black people voting, right? It, it was an outrageous idea. It was ridiculous. Nobody would take you seriously if you brought this shit up. But now that is within the Overton window, the window of reasonable discussion. And what's outside of the window is discussing taking those rights away. Generally speaking, I mean, obviously the Republican Party has been desperately trying to take black voters' rights away this whole time. But saying it out in the open publicly, I think black people shouldn't be voting. That's not really an acceptable position to hold in society today, right? Let me link that back to cults for you. Cults vary in how dangerous they are. The more dangerous and destructive and vindictive and evil a cult is, generally speaking, the fewer members they bring in. The fewer people will fall for their propaganda and their recruiting efforts because you you know, you got to bring people pretty fucking far to to bring them into Scientology. You've got to move them over. Get their view of acceptable public discourse, you got to move their Overton window all the way over here to get them to a point where they're willing to accept some of the ideas that Scientology presents, for example, right? So the more extreme a cult is, the harder it is to recruit people into it, generally speaking. But here's the catch with Dominionism. Dominionism is so mainstream at this point. They've brought in so many people and they have lobbied so many politicians to push these ideas. They have moved the Overton window, the window of acceptable public political discourse, they moved that closer to where they are. The difference between Scientology and Dominionism is they have made their ideas more acceptable in the mainstream. That's what the Republican Party really is following, is these extreme ideas of dominionism. That's what they're chasing. And that is largely the result of people like Jerry Falwell Sr. and Billy Graham and all those other old televangelists doing their best to integrate politics and religion together seamlessly. So dominionism is a really unique case where it, it, it's basically an extreme doomsday cult that holds mainstream ideas. That is one of the most dangerous things about it. So your question was, is dominionism a cult? I would say yes. Your second question was, is dominionism one of the most dangerous cults? And my response is yes. Not necessarily because they have more extreme, the most extreme beliefs, because there are more extreme beliefs out there uh, and more dangerous beliefs. Like look at Heaven's Gate, for example. It's, it's one of the most extreme, radical, out there belief systems that there are. I would say Heaven's Gate was a lot more radical and bizarre than Dominionism is. But... There were fewer of them because it was so extreme. It was hard to bring in new members. So dominionism, I would say, is one of the most dangerous in the U.S. at the very least. I'd say it's the most dangerous in the U.S. because they have normalized very, very radical extreme beliefs, made them mainstream, and brought in a lot of members as a result. Hello. This is Miles from Arizona. Um, I thankfully did not grow up in a cult. I actually was only raised Reformed Jewish. Um, but I do have a question about not Reformed, but Orthodox Jews, because even though everyone knows that evangelicals were the probably the biggest Trump supporter block, um, there was a study that showed that 83% of Orthodox Jews voted for Donald Trump in the 2020 election. So 
what are your thoughts on the Orthodox Jews? Do you think they are a cult? And if you know enough about them, do you, if you know enough about them, I guess, because, yeah, because admittingly, they are a much smaller group than probably almost every other cult. They're probably only in the few thousand, but I am curious, would you consider the Orthodox Jews a cult, considering they voted for Donald Trump? Um, thank you. Appreciate that. Really interesting question. Um, I don't know a lot about Judaism and the different sects, S-E-C-T-S, that come with it, so it's hard for me to speak on this, but I will say that there are Jewish sects out there that are very, very radical, very extreme, and I would definitely call some of them a cult, like the Hasidic community. Some of the communities in New York are very, very extreme and, and most definitely cults. But like I said, I don't feel like I'm informed enough to talk about the subject. There are people out there who tackle this kind of thing. And you should subscribe to them. I feel like Genetically Modified Skeptic talks about this kind of thing from time to time. Um, but like I said, he's way more well-versed in this subject than I am. He knows a lot more about it than I do. Anyway, thank you for the voicemail. I appreciate that. And uh, check, out God, uh, check out Genetically Modified Skeptic. He may be able to um, you know, give you a little bit more context for it. I'm sure most of you are probably fully aware of what's going on in my life right now. It's completely turned upside down because uh, we reported a teacher for saying something really inappropriate in front of Kylie. And the entire town, literally 3,500 people, half of those people, 17, 1,800 total, joined a Facebook group dedicated to doxing me, sending pictures of my address around, sending pictures of my house, um, all kinds of shit. And... It got really, really fucking bad. Threats of arson and, you know, there are like scouting parties out looking for me to go in public right now and everything, right? So I left. I left West Virginia, went somewhere to uh, basically like a safe house pretty much for a week. But I had to come back because I had to do the podcast and I had to record. And I have all of this equipment that cannot be set up anywhere else. It has to be at my house right now because of the monitors the cameras and the camera mounts, the lights, the microphone, uh, the audio interface, the computers, everything. It all ha it's all set up here, right? So I had to come back here for 36 hours. And so I'm here and I'm doing the podcast now. And I did a video earlier today, arrived late, like one in the morning or midnight, maybe last night. And I'm leaving again at eight o'clock in the morning. But uh, before I left a week ago, I brought my computers and any valuable stuff to a different location in case somebody really did burn my house down. I didn't want to lose all that. So I brought the most important things elsewhere. Well, this morning I go to pick the stuff up from where I put it and I'm driving back with my computer and guess what happened? Can you guys see that monitor right there? That's my computer. The monitor is destroyed completely destroyed. It fell on a camera thing. The computer I do all of my editing with is destroyed, but I have a laptop, a little laptop I can do editing with, so it's fine. Not not a terribly big deal. I will survive, but that's just one more fucking nail in the coffin, man. It does not get easier. When I was younger, I was broke as fucking shit. I didn't have a penny to my name. My parents were living off of social security and just barely. I would eat buttered bread for like weeks at a time, right? Set me up for failure. And I was broke as shit for the vast majority of my adult life. I, I've been so broke for most of my adult life. I didn't even, I didn't even have the money for like dental, like dental work. Uh, we didn't have the money for braces when I was little. And I have struggled and fought and worked my ass off to get teeth pulled when I didn't have the money for anything else. It was like $85 to have a tooth extracted or like 150 to have it filled. And I didn't have the 150 so I got it extracted. Never got a dental implant because I can't fucking afford one. I, I could never afford one. I could never afford just basic dental work. My, bro my ex-brother-in-law used to commit a crime and go to jail so he could get his teeth extracted because 
in jail, they will pay for that. On the outside, they won't. I know what it's like to be fucking broke. And to tell you the truth, I did not have the money to move right now. I didn't have the money to do it. It was not there. But I received so much support from everybody in the community that I do have the money to move now. I don't have the money to get that dental implant. My teeth are probably going to remain fucked up for a while because I don't have that much money, but I have enough to live. I have enough to make it because of you guys. So I, I can't possibly express how much I appreciate everything that all of you guys have done. Every $1.49 donation that's been sent, every 99 cent donation, it's not just money that you guys are sending to me. It's an expression of support. It's showing me that you guys are standing with me, and I appreciate it. Anyways, let's take a look at Super Chats. Steve Brown, sorry the Jesus Weezers are giving you and your daughter a bad time. They aren't happy unless they're doing the persecution. I know. You know, I thought about this a while back. Like, I remember looking on the news and seeing, like, Dr. Fauci was saying that he, he had to hire bodyguards to follow his kids around at school to make sure nobody did something crazy to him. Because of Trump's, uh, you know, influence, Trump's demonization of the virus and everything else. And I kept trying to think to myself, like, in every situation, I look for a positive. I look for, like, a learning experience we can pull from it or some kind of anything positive I can pull from a situation. I always try to find that, you know. But what positive is there to Dr. Fauci having to have bodyguards? There is no like upside to that. There is no positive to this. There's no learning experience that we can gain from this. You know, it, it doesn't bring more attention to an issue, really. It's just a guy being attacked by cult members who are obsessed with hating him. There's no good side to this, sadly. And in a lot of ways, I feel similar to Fauci in that respect. Like, what positive can I pull from the situation with me happening with the teacher and everything? And I've come to the determination that there is a positive that I can pull from it. And the positive is that I now know that there is a massive fucking community behind me and behind everybody here. There is a just absurd level of support in this community, in this immoral, un unchristian, unchristlike community, this moralless, valueless community of ours is just, just I, I couldn't have possibly asked for more. Like, people have helped me so fucking much. It's just the shit, man. It's just the shit. There's no other better way to say it. I don't know what I would have done without you guys, with, without everybody. All the donations and support and everything that I've received blows me away. I, I, I don't even know what else to say. I really appreciate everything. Jesse Schodel, some money to help with your troubles. Is Kylie okay? Kylie seems okay. She seems to be doing well. I think that she, well, her mom bought her an iPad recently, engraved on the back, talking about how brave she is for doing what she did. And she's received a lot of support from you guys. One of the things that helped get Kylie through is seeing that, you know, there's a Facebook page out there with 17, 1800 people dedicated to doxing us, sending around pictures of our home or, or pictures of our house and everything. 1800 people doing this shit, talking about how terrible I am, how they want to kidnap her because I'm an evil, raging atheist. They want to kidnap her and turn her Christian. But on the other side was a group of people following her account on Twitter, numbering in the 3,000s, I think. 3,000 followers in like two days' time. 1,800 people on their Facebook group attacking us to 3,000 showing support for her. I think that went a long way. That really helped her a lot. And I told her that you guys, last week, you donated a bunch of money to her, and uh, she couldn't have possibly been happier about it. I was actually planning on using some of the money you guys donated to get her an iPad, but her mom ended up getting it for her anyways, so didn't need to do that, so she just gets the cash now. Anyways, thank you for the super chat. Chem Panda, Country Roads can heck off. Thank you. Oh, my God. Country Roads can heck off. 
Dan Yeager, can we please get a kitty update? I know we're all worried about UNAF Zero, but the kitties are important too. 100%, yes. I will give you an update. I miss the holy frick out of them. They are in kitty daycare currently. They will be in kitty daycare until Thursday. And I'm hoping to have an apartment in another city on Thursday. So I'll be coming back to pick them up and then driving them to the new apartment. That's currently my plan. But I'm living three days at a time right now. I don't know what's happening in my life past three days. I, I can't really talk about what I'm doing in the next three days because I don't want to risk anything, But because this is public. But yeah, I know what's happening Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And, and Thursday in this case, so four days, I guess. But after that, I, I, I have no fucking idea. I'm playing it three days at a time. That's it. Anyway, uh, hopefully next week you'll get to see the kitties. Mistress Crimson 98. So sorry for what you and Kylie have had to go through. Funny how the religion of a loving God can have some of the most hate-filled followers help. This helps getting you closer to safety. I appreciate that. Everything helps. Chris D. Hey, man, you're awesome. I came across your channel last year, and I have to say I enjoy the content. Screw the religious idiots giving you trouble. Yeah, like I said, I thought about staying around here just to fuck them, you know, just like not roll over, but they are literally looking to kill me. I can't stay here sadly trickster hey owen buy your daughter something nice she did nothing wrong and deserves something nice i appreciate that she did get an ipad recently so that i'll consider that but i will give her the money from that so thank you miles have things gotten any better for you and kylie or can you still not go outside what evangelicals and trumpets are doing to you too is sickening can't go outside still i was putting some boxes in my car to move them to a safer place like you know my valuables basically my game collection, like some of my Super Nintendo games and stuff. I was moving them somewhere else in case somebody decides to burn the house down. And Kylie and Rose, my girlfriend, were helping me carry them out to the car. And we're putting them in the back, and a van rolls up and stops in the middle of the road and stares at me, probably wondering if they should get out or not. I told those two to go inside quickly, just drop their shit and go. But... um the guy ended up moving on anyways. But that's the kind of situation we're in right now. It's fucking dangerous. But I'm leaving again tomorrow morning. So 8 a.m. I'm, I'm out of here again. I only came here for one day, for Sunday, so I could work and, you know, do the recording and everything. And then I'm leaving again. Sarah Felix, tell them you're coming to our place in Colorado and that we totally don't have a sword collection and crazy sword s skills to fight them off with. Okay, I appreciate that. I'm just not going to tell them where I'm going at all. I just hope that I can move into this place as quickly as possible. Nightcore C12. What are we going to do in this country? Donald Trump was not impeached and teachers can get away with preaching their religion in a public school. I hope we can move the Overton window a little closer to the center. That's what I hope for. That's the best I can hope for. It's really fucking disturbing, though. Pumpkin J. Stay safe. We're here to support you. You've got the entire community behind you. So I'm finding out. I had no idea that Everybody out there is going to be so supportive. It's just insane, man. And Iron Butterfly, here's a bit to help with the kitty daycare and moving fund. Be careful, stay safe. Yeah, the kitty daycare is actually pretty fucking expensive, as it turns out. 13 days is how long they were staying, I think. And it's basically $35 per kitty per night. But we had no choice. We couldn't, we couldn't leave them in the house. What if somebody... Burned the fucking house down, which is a real concern. Tried to shoot it up or something. We had to take them out. Very expensive, but it was worth it in the end. Night Wings of an Angel. Owen, you and Kylie did the right moral thing. Keep, keep being strong. Buy something for Kylie. It's not right for a kid to see this side of the world, I know. Already, so young. It, it fucking sucks, dude. Turbo Waitress. Hey, Owen, I know things are dangerous right now, but if and when you can, consider reaching out to your state's Department of Education. Please take care. Thanks. Yeah, well, she's switching different to different school district anyway, so different state for that matter. Dustin Helling, longtime listener and viewer, appreciate your content and views. Hopefully you get moved safely. Hopefully so. I'll know in the next seven days. By this time next week, I'll have new information about where I'm living. Christopher McLennan, I've been there too, Owen. Broke and massively in debt. Took me 10 years, but I finally have a little in the bank to spare. Hope this helps stay strong. And thanks to you guys, I have a little bit in the bank to get me out of this fucking shithole. So thank you guys so much. Ordinary night. You should probably skip town right after the live stream. It might be dangerous to stick around till morning. Hope you stay safe, man. Yeah, I thought about that, but I have to sleep.
I can't. I I don't have a choice in what's happening. We I mean, we have to wait until the morning so I can get an account balance statement or something from the bank for, from my bank before we get to my area. Blue Phoenix, stay safe. Please update us on Twitter after you leave the area tomorrow. I will do that. I will do that. I've been trying to push updates on Twitter, but I've also been really careful about what I say on there because I don't want anybody to follow it and then track me down or something. Sydney Morgan, I hope things get better for you. My parents are pretty deep into the right-wing evangelicalism, as are many of my coworkers. It sucks because they're otherwise good people. It does suck, man. And it sucks when they come after you, too. And you, you can't be yourself. It's insane. My God, what an insane situation. Next, we're going to talk about Pastor Robert Jeffress saying you're intolerant if you don't tolerate intolerance. Give us 30 seconds, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. The next article I wanted to look at is titled Robert Jeffress, criticizing Oral Roberts University for being anti-gay is intolerant, quote unquote. This is by Hemant Mehta on the Friendly Atheist website, so let's give it a read and see what it says. A few days ago, Hamal Havari, I feel like I pronounced that wrong, I apologize if so, wrote a perfectly reasonable story for USA Today about how Oral Roberts University's basketball success comes with some added baggage. By numbers alone, the number 15 seeded ORU team Oral Roberts University team, should have lost its first game. Instead, it won both games last weekend, making it to the Sweet 16. In a competition that is built on Cinderella stories, Oral Roberts University is arguably the most unlikely team to make it this far into the tournament this year. Their next game is Saturday night against number three, Arkansas. But Haveri rightly points out that the school will likely use this tournament to boost its reputation, even though it doesn't deserve that because the school bans any students in same-sex relationships and the NCAA is allowing it to happen. That's kind of messed up. Here's a quote. As a private university and under the banner of fundamentalist Christian beliefs, the school is free to impose whatever standards of behavior they see fit, even if those standards are wildly out of line with modern society and the basic values of human decency. Now, as Oral Roberts gains national attention, the focus shouldn't just be on their very good men's basketball team, but on their prejudiced teachings and moral regressiveness. Now, Oral Roberts is primed to reap the rewards of the work from their unpaid student-athletes. On the backs of those hard-working kids, the university will seek to rewrite the narrative of their school into one of athletic victory, when in fact, it's steeped in bigotry and exclusionary fundamentalism. The NCAA gave Oral Roberts that opportunity by allowing them into the tournament. Fans and media eager to embrace a Cinderella story helped push that narrative along, either without knowing all the facts or willingly burying them as irrelevant. Fascinating. So I guess this is part of the article from USA Today. And I think I can agree with that. I think I can agree with all of it. You know, the the NCAA is helping Oral Roberts basically rebuild their bad reputation, a reputation that's rightly bad for being just very bigoted, disgusting, for holding bigoted, disgusting views, pretty much. This is Hemant Mehta speaking. There are two separate issues here. How ORU, or Oral Roberts University, will use its basketball success to redefine the school, and whether the NCAA should even allow schools like it in the tournament. There are obvious legal issues with the latter. Should any private school that's anti or anti-LGBT be allowed in the tournament? What's the line? But the fact remains that ORU's anti-LGBTQ policies contradict the NCAA's own stated values. The same could be said about Abilene Christian University, whose team is still in the tournament, and Liberty University, whose team is not. There are also multiple Catholic schools left in the tournament whose overall beliefs likely contradict the NCAA's goals as well. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I absolutely 100% agree that if their policies contradict or go against the NCAA's own stated values, they shouldn't be allowed in the tournament. 
I don't see why this is such a controversial take. If they want to be a part of, you know, this organization, the NCAA, they have to follow the rules just like everybody else does. Now, bear in mind that those may not be official rules by the NCAA. They're just stated values. And I think those stated values should be respected personally. This is Hemant Mehta again. It's also true that many of these athletes don't necessarily give a damn about the school's policies. They may sign a faith statement as part of going there, but they just want to play. And if that means going to ORU or Liberty U or any other Division I school, so be it. It'd be unfair to punish the students for the bigotry of the schools they represent. I disagree, and let me tell you why I disagree with that. People have talked about, like, my situation with the teacher and everything. You know, I, I'm sure most people probably know about my situation with the teacher. I'll just give you a quick, a quick explanation of it. Um, one of Kylie's public school teachers started talking about God and talking shit about atheists, saying they're evil and blah, 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 blah. She got it on recording. We turned it into the Board of Education and the teacher purportedly got in trouble for what she said because that is illegal and they could be sued for that, right? Well, a lot of people are saying that it's the students who have to pay for that lawsuit, so we shouldn't do it at all. But ultimately, in in my opinion, yeah, I understand that the money that goes toward paying the lawsuits fines and legal fees and everything. I understand that money comes out of teaching the classes and things like that. I get that. But we have to be careful not to victim blame here. Whose fault is it that the school district has to pay a fine? It's not only the teacher's fault for breaking the law, but it's the school board's fault for not doing anything about it. They have the option of doing something about it, stopping the teacher, firing her, something. And they choose not to. And that is the moment at which the money that comes out of their pockets, the money that comes from the students, it's on their heads. It's the school board's fault. The onus is on them. So, yeah, I understand a lawsuit will cost, ultimately, the students. But whose fault is it that they broke the law? It's the teacher's fault and the school board's fault. If they didn't want the money coming out of the students' pockets, the students' hands or mouths, they shouldn't have broken the law, or they should have been careful to remedy the situation when the time came, and they didn't. So, Hemant Mehta has an interesting point here. He says, it'd be unfair to punish the students for the bigotry of the schools they represent. You are punishing the schools, and it's the school's fault. Don't let the onus get flipped. It's the school's fault here. Now, if the students are suffering, it's a reason for the school to change. The onus is on the school. It's not on us to accommodate the school. It's not on the NCAA to let them in anyways because they're just students trying to play basketball or football or any other sport. It's not like that. It's the school's fault, and they need to fix the problem if they don't want their students to suffer the consequences. That's my my take on it. Anyways, back to uh, what Hemet Mehta was saying. Anyway, last night, Pastor Robert Jeffress was asked to speak about the USA Today article on Fox News, and naturally, he turned this into a diatribe about cancel culture. Of course, that's the extreme hard-right evangelicals go-to phrase right now is cancel culture everything is cancel culture i find it interesting that he was on fox news though because his go-to fox news show was lou dobbs and of course lou dobbs was canceled by fox news for some shady shit i don't remember what it was now but here is robert jeffress on fox news again a different show this time i guess on fox news so let's see what this fella had to say for himself Pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas, Fox News contributor Dr. Robert Jeffress. Good to have you back, sir. Thank you, Shannon. Want to read a little bit more of that piece? Uh, they go on to look at the shit eating grin on his face. <laughs> Gotta love it. Say on the backs of the hardworking kids, because they're not, they don't want to insult the kids that are playing in the tournament. They say the university will seek to rewrite the narrative of their school into one of athletic victory when in fact it's steeped in bigotry and an exclusionary fundamentalism. Uh, these folks. Yeah, remember, this is a quote from the the article on USA Today, I believe it was, by Hamal Havari. 
or Hamal Haveri. I apologize if I'm getting that name wrong. I, I'm doing my best. Hey, the, the school shouldn't even be part of the tournament because it doesn't line up with NCAA values. <laughs> well, look, I mean, this is March Madness that we're witnessing with all of this. And, you know, when you think about it, for the so-called inclusion editor of USA Today to call for the exclusion of a basketball team or a school because of their religious beliefs, I mean, that's the height of hypocrisy. And it proves the adage that many times those who cry loudest for tolerance are the most intolerant people when it comes to ideas they disagree with. Interesting point. Okay, so what this guy is talking about here is something called the paradox of intolerance. I believe that's what it's called. It's the idea that if you want to live in a tolerant society, then you have to be intolerant of people who are intolerant. You can't tolerate intolerance. So let me put it this way. If you want to be in a society that is tolerant of LGBT rights of, um, you know, atheist rights, uh, equality across the board, um, you know, doesn't have a racist bone in its body. If you want to live in a society where people are tolerant of each other and love each other are, and are inclusionary, then you can't put up with people who are racist, who hate LGBT people. You can't put up with that kind of thing. By definition, if you're in a tolerant society, you won't include intolerant people in it. That's the paradox of intolerance. And generally speaking, for the most part, I believe that we should be able to say anything, pretty much, within reason, within the bounds of what is legally acceptable. Obviously, there's a line for everybody, including the U.S. government. There is a line of acceptable speech uh, and unacceptable speech with the U.S. government. So I, I, I guess you could say I fall on that line. I don't want anybody going to jail for what they say, for the most part. Um, but when it comes to things like including people in football games or, or basketball games or whatever, like we're seeing here, I have no issue with the NCAA being selective about who they allow in. I'm okay with them not including intolerant people. If we want to live in a society of inclusion, there have to be guardrails. By definition, you have to not let in intolerant people if you're in a tolerant society. So that's the paradox of tolerance. Anyway, let's keep watching this clip. I allowed us for tolerance are the most intolerant people when it comes to ideas they disagree with. And only ideas of intolerance. That's the whole bit here. We don't tolerate intolerance, and that's what this is. Look, Shannon, people may not agree with ORU's belief that marriage should be between a man and a woman, but that's hardly an extreme or fanatical belief. For 3,000 years, that's been the teaching of Judaism. For 2,000 years, the teaching of Christianity. And okay, so it's been the teaching of Judaism and Christianity for all this time. What if it's wrong? Do you ever consider the idea that maybe it's wrong? Up until 50 years ago, black people weren't allowed to drink from the same water fountains as white people in the U.S. There is a long history, 200, 300 years, of them drinking from different water fountains. Is that an argument to keep it the same? Is that a reason to prevent integration? Is that a reason to keep segregation in place because it's been here this entire time? No, that's absolutely fucking ridiculous. And the fact that he's arguing this is an embarrassment to our society in the U.S. You allow this kind of cancel culture to exist. Oh, here we fucking go again, cancel culture. That's all they talk about right now. This is not cancel culture. I actually intended to do a video on Dr. Seuss and the whole Dr. Seuss debacle where they claimed that it was cancel culture striking again when it absolutely wasn't. It was just a publisher choosing to not publish their own fucking books anymore. But I, I don't even know. I don't even know where to go with this story. 
Like, I'm so sick of hearing this cancel culture bullshit. And if you allow this kind of cancel culture to exist, where do you stop it? I mean, what about Catholic universities like uh, Notre Dame or Gonzaga uh, that are part of the Catholic Church that opposes abortion or women's reproductive rights, as it's called? Should Well, I would say the line is where the NCAA put their statement of values, right? Isn't that the, the line that was being drawn in the USA Today article? They said this organization doesn't line up with the NCAA's uh, stated values, and that's why they shouldn't be included. That's where the line is. Uh, but this guy is talking to the extreme right. He's talking to far right Christians right now, and they're just eating it up listening to him. Uh, that are part of the Catholic Church that opposes or women's reproductive rights, as it's called. Should they be excluded as well? I think it's time for this irrational intolerance of people of faith by the left, especially people of the conservative Christian faith. It's time for that to end. And it No, it's not about that. We're not intolerant of Christians or, you know, conservatives or any of that. We are intolerant of intolerance. I don't want racist bullshit in my life i don't want misogynistic bullshit in my life the ncaa doesn't need misogynistic racist bullshit in their ranks that is the paradox of intolerance they are separating themselves from intolerance in an effort to make the country more tolerant intolerance of people of faith by the left, especially people of the conservative Christian faith, it's time for that to end and it needs to end now. Well, you know, there's a piece uh, in uh, rebuttal in the USA Today talking about from Chick-fil-A to the Salvation Army to this baker in Colorado, Jack Phillips, who, by the way, is going to be on with us tomorrow. We have to decide whether we want to run everyone out of everywhere they dare to go with their biblically based ideas. Maybe we could just let the religious college kids play basketball without becoming a national controversy. That is what tolerance used to mean. No, they're not biblical values. They are this weird little fucking subset of extremists' values. I know a ton of Christians who don't believe in intolerance. I know a ton of inclusionary, loving Christians. It's not about that. It's about people being intolerant and hateful and bigoted. That's what it is. Nobody needs to be tolerant of that bullshit. National controversy. That is what tolerance used to mean. I mean, do you think there's space for people to agree, uh, disagree about these are hot button issues that they don't have to endorse each other's view of the issue? Can we find that space? Well, I hope we can. But again, I mean, it is not right to try to force uh, beliefs on people. ORU is not trying to. Huh. How about that? Not right to force beliefs on people. Isn't that ironic? Coming from Mr. Robert Jeffress himself. This dude is the king. Oh, shit. Bought my mic. This dude is the king of forcing his beliefs on people. That is what he is all about. That's what he's always been about. That's part of his fucking Christian beliefs. Cram Jesus down people's throats until they can't breathe. I can't believe I'm hearing this out of this guy's mouth their beliefs on anyone. The fact is those students are there because they volunteered to be there. And I think there's a lot of confusion, Shannon, because people say, well, the Supreme Court has uh, legalized gay marriage. It's legalized abortion. The Supreme Court has the authority to decide what's constitutional, but it has absolute. Yeah, exactly. What's legal. That's what they did. The Supreme Court said that it is legal for gay marriage and for to take place in the U.S. That's what the Supreme Court decided, that it's not against the Constitution. And for all intents and purposes, that means we're perfectly free to get gay married or have abortions because the Supreme Court made that decision. No moral authority to decide what is right or wrong. Nobody said they had the moral authority to decide what was right or wrong. They said that the Supreme Court decided that it's perfectly legal and constitutional to do those things. Why is he suddenly flipping it around and trying to take a different 
angle with this. No one said anything about morality. It has the authority to decide what's constitutional, but it has absolutely no moral authority to decide what is right or wrong, and neither does the NCAA or neither does USA Today. Yeah, but USA Today and NCAA do have the right to decide what's morally right or wrong for their company. They can decide for their people and their organizations what they think is right because it's a private company. They can do what they fucking want, right? This guy is in favor of private companies up until the moment that he's not. He is all about giant corporations and tax cuts and liberty and freedom and all of that other shit until it starts interfering with what he wants and when that time comes, he's suddenly completely against those things. CAA or neither does USA Today. That's something for the purview of faith. Okay, we're just about out of time. So I just want to say a thank you to you and your team. Okay, wait a minute. Now, that, that, that was fascinating. So he said the NCAA doesn't have the right to decide things on moral grounds. That's a matter for faith. So he's saying that Religion is the only thing that can decide moral values. And his religion has decided... Look at his eyes here. He looks so angry. And his religion has decided that gay marriage is evil. So everybody in the U.S., maybe even the world, needs to fall in line with that because he is the moral authority. Isn't that interesting? USA Today. That's something for the purview of faith. Okay, we're just about out of time. So I just want to say a thank you to you and your team there at First Baptist Dallas. Um, huge contributions to my new book that is coming out next week, The Women of the Bible. Nope, nope, not going to get a shout out on my channel. Fascinating stuff, man. This guy is something else. Anyway, let's read a quote from the video we just watched. Those who cry loudest for tolerance are the most intolerant people when it comes to ideas they, they disagree with. I think it's time for this irrational intolerance of people of faith by the left, especially people of the conservative Christian faith, it's time for that to end, and it needs to end now. This is Hemet Meta speaking. Jeffress, as usual, missed the point. This isn't about disagreement. This isn't about banning an athlete for holding an unpopular view. It's a question of whether the NCAA should welcome schools that violate their own mission. But Jeffress only sees Christian persecution. Even obvious hypocrisy has to go through that lens. So questioning ORU's anti-gay stance is somehow an attack on all Christians everywhere. This is pretty standard for Robert Jeffress. He has a way of making it all about himself. And I'm honestly impressed by his ability to completely ignore anything except for Christian persecution. Next, we're going to talk about a West Virginia lawmaker quoting the Bible in chamber to defend an anti-trans bill. Give us 30 seconds and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. The next article I wanted to look at is titled, West Virginia GOP Lawmaker Defends Anti-Trans Bill, My God Does Not Make a Mistake. This is by Hemet Mehta on the Friendly Atheist website, so let's give it a read and see what it says. On Wednesday, the West Virginia State House passed a bill preventing transgender middle and high school students from playing sports with the appropriate team. It's one of several similar bills being passed in Republican-led legislatures because... Well, it's not like that party wants to do anything to actually help people. It's cruelty all the way down. There was a debate, though, before that West Virginia bill passed. Democrats pointed out that this bill was addressing a problem that didn't exist in the state. Besides that, it sent an awful message. Quote, Delegate Barbara Evans Fleischer, uh, D. Monongalia, was the last Democrat to speak Thursday. My daughter is different. My daughter plays sports. My daughter is beautiful. My daughter is intelligent. And she's left this state, Fleischer said. And it is this kind of bill that will ensure that she will never come back. Please don't pass this bill. You are demonizing little children and you are demonizing my baby, she said. 
This is Hemet Mehta. That's heartbreaking, and it's in stark contrast to this kind of statement from Republican delegate Roger Conley, who was so proud of what he said, he bragged about it on Facebook. This is from the chambers where somebody was arguing in favor of this bill. So let's see what he said about it. The gentleman from the 10th that Conley's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I speak to the bill? Yes, she was recognized. Uh, I appreciate the uh, the law that's been presented here, the bill that's been presented here, I should say. Uh, and it's a, a verification of a law that's already on the books. And uh, let me just, uh, if you may bear with me, read from that book and read from to you that law. Okay, so he's getting ready to give us a law, right? He's about to read a book that has a law in it. Not a U.S. law, not a U.S. book, apparently, so do not have any idea why it's relevant, but let's stick with it. Let's see what he says. It's, uh, King James Version, Genesis. Chapter Who could have fucking guessed the King James Version and Genesis? Not a book of law, if I remember correctly. The one, starting with verse 26, and God said... Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created the point, him, point of order is raised. Email. The point of order is raised. Gentlemen will state the point. Gentlemen will state the point. Yeah, what's the point here? That, that's not a book of law. Genesis was just like a, Genesis was a different genre of writing. Like today we have romance novels, we have comedy, um, you know, we have fiction and nonfiction and things like that. Those are genres of writing. Well, Genesis was a, a, a different type of book altogether. It was a different style of writing, a different genre of writing. Uh, they even had genres back then that we don't have today. One of them was called apocalyptic genre. Uh, which is what Revelation and Daniel were written in. But Genesis was not a book of law, and it has absolutely zero relevance to us today. Let's keep listening. Talk about the bill, please. The Sorry. Something to the bill. Something to the bill. God created a man and a woman. So they, they basically they said, okay, thank you. Uh, how is this connected to the bill at all? Can you please tell us what this has to do with it? And he says, God created a man and a woman. To believe that there is a man. Now, obviously, taking this as literal history, bizarrely. He's taking Genesis as a literal recount of, an actu of actual history. That thinks they should be a woman, or a woman that thinks they should be a man, is saying that my God made a mistake. And I've got news for all of you. My God does not make a mistake. Okay, that's even more disturbing. So he's saying that God doesn't make a mistake. Um, that, that raises an awful lot of questions for me. What about, you know what? While I'm thinking about it, let me pull something up real quick. A lot of you guys probably seen this, but I really want to play it anyway. So for those of you who may not, let's watch this. This is Stephen Fry. Suppose what Oscar believed in as he died, in spite of your protestations, suppose it's all true, mm. and you walk up to the pearly gates and you are confronted by God. What will Stephen Fry say to him, her, or it? I will basically, what's known as the Odyssey, I think, I, I'll say bone cancer in children? What's that about? How dare you? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain? That's what I'd say. Well said. Couldn't fucking agree with you more, Stephen Fry. That's on point. I don't see how somebody like this guy here could possibly believe that God doesn't make mistakes, quote unquote. And for that matter, FYI, being trans isn't a mistake. There's no mistake in that. Make a mistake. So the bottom line is, if you're born a boy, a male, you're a male until you die. If you're born a female, you're a female until you die. So it's only fair that if you're born a male... Is this only fair? Let's hear about fairness from this guy. ...to meet in male sports. 
if you're born a female, it's only fair that you compete in a female sport. So therefore, I absolutely support this bill 100%, and I would certainly urge everybody else in here to do the same. <laughs> this, is, this is what West Virginia has to offer. As we have seen in recent weeks, West Virginia is a shithole, for lack of a better term. I'll use Trump's own words. It's a shithole. And the, these are the types of people who come out of it. Welcome to West Virginia. Let's continue reading. This is Hemant Mehta speaking. That's heartbreaking, and it's in stark contrast to this kind of statement from Republican Delegate Roger Conley, who was so proud of what he said, he bragged about it on Facebook. Yeah. This is a quote. To believe that there's a man that thinks they should be a woman or a woman that thinks they should be a man is saying that my God made a mistake, and I've got news for all of you. My God does not make a mistake. End quote. This is Hemant Mehta. The mere existence of trans people is an insult to Conley's religion. That's seriously his argument. People have health problems and need doctors. They have eye problems and need glasses. They have ear problems and need hearing aids. It turns out God makes a hell of a lot of mistakes, if that's your belief, but they can be fixed. Conley, of all people, should understand that. He caught COVID last year and needed special drugs to overcome that particular God mistake. For Conley to pretend that trans people alone shouldn't be allowed to right a wrong because his God is apparently too weak to handle it says a lot about how pathetic his faith is and how bigoted he is. Imagine how horrible a human being you have to be to get elected to office only to use your power to ruin the lives of children who are already struggling with enough. There is a lot of hypocrisy in this, obviously. This guy isn't thinking straight if he said his God doesn't make a mistake, but conveniently forgot about, I don't know, bone cancer and children, like Stephen Fry said, or the fact that people have eye problems and need glasses, they have ear problems, they need hearing aids. He didn't think about any of this, but it doesn't matter. The hypocrisy doesn't matter to him. He doesn't give a shit. All he cares about is his deeply held beliefs and destroying anybody who disagrees with his deeply held beliefs. It's disgusting. Next, we're going to talk about Republicans using propaganda against a Justice Department nominee. Give us 30 seconds and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. So the next article I wanted to look at is titled Justice Nominee Promises She'll Divest Her Stake in Avantor. This is on Bloomberg. This is an unusual article. It's not really a religious article, but it's a case study in propaganda. And I thought it, was, it would be an interesting read. So let's start reading it and I'll get into why this is important in a second. This was by Stephen T. Dennis, FYI. President Joe Biden's nominee for a top post at the Justice Department intends to sell her remaining $14.5 million stake in a company her father chairs amid questioning about a report the company sold chemicals diverted by Mexican drug cartels to make heroin. Vanita Gupta made the pledge in written responses to questions from Senator Chuck Grassley, an Iowa Republican, of course, as part of the nomination process. Grassley cited a Bloomberg Business Week investigation that found a chemical Avantor Inc. makes acetic anhydride, which is easily, uh, I'm sorry, was easily tapped by narcotics gangs. Now, let me talk about this for a minute because this is how propaganda works. Basically, this person has been nominated to be in the Justice Department by Joe Biden, and they needed to find some way to destroy her reputation. So what did they do? Her father, I think, is somehow loosely linked to this company that makes acetic anhydride. Acetic anhydride is an extremely common chemical that's used in all kinds of chemical labs for all kinds of different things. It's not just drug manufacturing. There's all kinds of stuff. Basically, all it is is vinegar with no water in it. That's the anhydride part. Vinegar is acetic acid. That's its actual chemical name, acetic acid usually diluted to 6% with water. Acetic anhydride is vinegar with no water in it. 
It's used for all kinds of different shit. But making heroin is actually really, really straightforward. All you have to do is take morphine and vinegar or preferably acetic anhydride, put it together, bake it in an oven for eight hours, and you're done. That's it. Depending on the purity of the acetic acid or the acetic anhydride and the morphine and a a number of different things, it will come out to different variations of it. But this is what the Republican Party, and to a lesser extent the Democrat Party, that's, this is what they do. They create propaganda to attack somebody. When they can't find anything legitimate to hit them over, they'll find something illegitimate to do it over. This woman was loosely connected to a guy, her dad, I think, who was loosely connected to this company that makes chemicals for laboratories and one of these laboratories manufactures vinegar that doesn't have water in it so how do we take that and how do we spin it how do we make her the villain here well we'll point out that vinegar is used in the production of heroin and boom she's helping drug cartels in mexico that simple that is how the republican party and like i said to the lesser extent the democrat party propagandize to people Suddenly, everybody thinks that she's a dirty politician because she's helping cartels make drugs. It's complete bullshit. She had an investment in a chemical company that produces vinegar that has no water. That's it. Anyway, let's keep reading. After the article was published last August, Avantor said it stopped all Mexican and Latin American sales of the chemical, even though they don't have to because just because you're selling to these countries doesn't mean that you're selling directly to cartels but they said they stopped all sales of it to these countries and it said it sold only to authorized buyers and complied with all mexican laws good enough for me it's just vinegar with no water gupta said she was aware of bloomberg's findings and that in addition to selling shares she controls she's previously proposed the trustee of shares in two family trusts intends to sell off the avantor stock at the first available opportunity Quote, as a shareholder with no role in Avantor, I am not able to say whether and how much I have profited from the various parts of Avantor's business, she told Grassley. Gupta said in other answers to the Judiciary Committee that she's about $5.1 million in Avantor-derived assets she controls and about $13 million via the two family trusts that she doesn't control. Andrew Bates, a spokesman for for President Joe Biden's transition, said about 3.75 million of the 5.1 million she controls was a cash distribution from a family trust from previous event or holdings. All of this is basically going through and trying to break it down and explain exactly how much she owns of it and how much she may have profited from this thing and that thing and blah, blah, blah. This is honestly like, say, hang on. heard a door outside and I got paranoid this is honestly like saying I'm trying to think of a really good analog here this is like saying a company who makes concrete cleaner like for pressure washing and stuff like that a company who like helps people clean patios if I owned stock in one of those companies they would come after me for helping meth manufacturing it's just completely like outside the realm of reasonability. There's nothing reasonable about this argument at all. It's just waterless vinegar. That's all it is. And it's one of many companies that produces vinegar that doesn't have any water in it. This is how propaganda is manufactured and pushed out to people. Watch for this kind of thing in the news in the future because it happens constantly. Thank you guys for coming and giving this a listen, and I will talk to you next week. If you like what I do and you want to make sure I can continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, you can support me on Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I sell all kinds of shirts and stickers and stuff on there. Second, you can support me by checking out my Etsy store. I sell 3D printed stands for every system from the original Nintendo to the Xbox One. And finally, if you want to support me in other ways, you can check me out on my other channels. I have the podcast channel, which is where I talk about whatever's on my mind. Politics, social issues 
issues, whatever. You can also find it everywhere podcasts can be found. Or you can check out the videos on my main channel where I focus on destructive cults. As it is with most channels these days, I rely on the support of viewers like you to keep my channel alive, so sharing my work is extremely helpful. Anyways, check me out in all those places if you haven't already. Thanks for listening, guys.